Welcome friends to this uh, week 7 lecture series of uh, soil science and technology and um, in this lecture series and in this coming 5 lectures we will discuss about uh, uh, different types of essential plant nutrients and uh, um, you know their functions and uh, the first topic we will cover that is the essential plant nutrients and uh, we will cover several aspects in this lecture and uh, the basic aspects which we will cover are uh, what is a essential plant nutrients and uh, what is the what are the criteria for essentiality how we consider a particular uh, element as an essential plant nutrient and then how we can classify the different essential elements and finally we'll see some deficiency symptoms of uh, different essential nutrients so guys let's let us start and uh, so, what is an essential element or essential nutrient? Sometimes we will use this term interchangeably essential element or essential nutrient. Now, an element without which a plant cannot survive or complete its life cycle is uh, termed as an essential element, essential nutrient or essential element. Now, you remember that there are 17 elements which are considered as the essential nutrients for the plant growth and development, and these are basically these 17. So, these 17 starts from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum, chlorine and nickel. So, remember these 17 elements are considered as essential nutrients for the plant because plant cannot complete its life cycle without uh, these uh, 17 essential elements regardless of their uh, quantity required. So, uh, we will discuss each of them uh, uh, you know uh, each of them individually in the current uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the coming um, slides. So, uh, let us go and see what are the criteria based on which we can uh, term in a particular element as an essential plant nutrient. Now, it you know that the total of 17 elements are essential for growth of the full development of higher green plants and these criteria of essentiality were given by two scientists called Arnon and Stout in the year 1939 and these three criteria are first of all a deficiency of an essential nutrient makes it impossible for the plant to complete the vegetative or reproductive stage of its life cycle. So, this is the first one. The second one is uh, you know the such deficiency is specific to the element in questions and cannot can be prevented or corrected only by uh, supplying this element. And finally, the element is involved directly in the nutrition of the plant quite apart from its possible effects in correcting some unfavorable microbiological or chemical condition of the soil or other culture medium. So, in other words a you know these three criteria are first of all the deficiency of that particular element uh, will make you know you know if, if there is a deficiency of that particular element the plant cannot survive or plant cannot complete its life cycle this is the first criteria. Second criteria is uh, the role of a specific element cannot be uh, corrected by supplying other elements. So, the role is very very specific and third this element must be involved in plant metabolism. So, these three are very very important criteria for considering a particular element as an essential or not essential. So, based on these three criteria we have selected the 17 elements as essential plant nutrients. So, uh, the essentiality of the most mac micronutrients for higher plants were established between 19 22 to 1954 and the essentiality of nickel the was established uh, you know it is the latest established essential nutrient uh, you know it was established in 1987 by brown et al although there is no unanimity among the scientists as to whether nickel is essential or beneficial however we will not go to that uh, you know we will not go to that uh, you know uh, argument and we will consider nickel as an important plant element or important essential element. So, the list may not be considered, we remember that 
However, you know, although we have we are considering 17 elements as essential plant elements, however, this list may not be considered as final and it is possible that more elements may prove to be essential in future because it is a continuous discovering process. So, uh, let us see what is the chronology of uh, discoveries of essential nutrient elements of the plant. So, we will see in which year the essentiality criteria or essentiality of that particular element was discovered or established by certain uh, scientific groups or research groups. So, uh, you know uh, let, let us start with the you know the, uh, the oxygen and this oxygen you know it, it, its discovery has been uh, you know you know since time immemorial. So, uh, we do not know exactly in which year its establishment uh, you know its essentiality was established and similarly for hydrogen and in case of carbon it was established by Priestley et al in 1800 and uh, in case of nitrogen uh, you know it was uh, first established by Theodore de Saussure in 1804 you know, and phosphorus by Sprengel in 1839 and also potassium and magnesium and calcium by Sprengel in 1939. So, Sprengel has established the uh, you know uh, Sprengel has established the essentiality of these four important minerals that is P, K, M, G and K, C, A. And for, as far as the sulphur is concerned, its essentiality was established by uh, Sachs and Knopp in 1860. And, uh, in case of chlorine, uh, it was uh, established by T. C. Breuer, A. B. Carlton, Johnson, and Stout in the year 1954. And iron was by E. Grease in 1843, mm, boron uh, by Warrington in 1923, and manganese by Mackard in 1922, and zinc by Som and Lipman. Uh, by uh, in 1926, copper by again some Lipman and McKinney in 1931, and molybdenum by Arnon and Stout, who has given that uh, essentiality criteria, and it was in 1939. And the latest one is nickel by Brown, Wells, and Gary in the year 1987. So this shows uh, this list shows the basically the chronology uh, of establishment of essentiality. Uh, criteria of uh, those uh, establishment of essentiality of these 17 uh, essential plant nutrients. So, so once we know that okay, these 17 are the important or essential plant nutrients. Now, let us uh, divide them uh, into several classes based on their relative importance or relative amount needed by the plant for maintaining their vegetative and reproductive cycle. So, if we start with the 17 elements broadly we convert we can we can classify these 17 elements into uh, two groups one is called the framework elements and taken you know the framework elements are basically the carbon hydrogen and oxygen and basically these three framework elements are you know taken from air and water we will discuss this later on and these framework elements are required for uh, you know for the production of cellulose and uh, uh, other building block mo molecules for plant body and the other elements basically we call the other 14 elements we call the mineral elements because uh, they are basically taken in ionic forms and or mineral form and we can <coughs> divide further divide those mineral nutrients into two groups one is called the macronutrients another is micronutrients based on the relative amount needed by the plant to maintain their life cycle so there are six macronutrients and only eight micronutrients so six macronutrients are again subdivided into uh, primary nutrients and secondary nutrients so there are three primary nutrients and there are three secondary nutrients and remember that this primary three nutrients that is nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium required in you know higher quantity than other elements and that is why these three elements that is nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are the common element which are present in fertilizers. And secondary nutrients are calcium, magnesium, sulphur and these elements are required in moderate quantity. However, micronutrients are required in minute quantity. However, 
they are uh, you know they are essential so that means of you know irrespective of their um, you know little amount needed by the plant they are essential so if they are if, you know if they are not present into the soil that will reflect in their deficiency symptoms in the plant uh, in the plant system so the micronutrients are basically eight starting from zinc then copper then manganese then iron then boron molybdenum chlorine and nickel so that's why you know this this chart you know this slide shows basically the classification of essential plant nutrients and i hope that now it is clear so let us move ahead and see what are the other beneficial plant nutrients so there is a basic difference between essential plant nutrients and beneficial plant nutrients now beneficial elements have been reported as um, you know to enhance the resistance to biotic stresses such as pathogen and herbivory and to abiotic stresses such as drought salinity and nutrient toxicity or deficiency and they are not required by all the plants but appear to benefit certain plants so they are essence they are they are beneficial to certain plants they are not required by all the plants so that's why they are not considered as essential plant elements however they show several benefits uh, for certain plants so that's why they are called beneficial plant nutrients so what are these beneficial plant nutrients uh, there are four to five uh, beneficial plant nutrients especially cobalt sodium uh, vanadium and silicon so these four are sometimes called as beneficial plant nutrients and remember that cobalt is required for nitrogen fixation in legumes and we'll we'll we'll, we'll discuss about the nitrogen fixation um, by leguminous crop in coming lectures and silicon is found in plant cell walls and appear to produce tougher cells so it helps in uh, you know protecting the cells by you know making the plant cell wall more uh, sturdy and this increase in the resistance of this plant so uh, when the silicon is present in the cell wall and make it sturdy and hard enough it increases the resistance of these plants to piercing and sucking insects and decrease the spread of fungal diseases so uh, that's why this you know the silicon is also considered as a beneficial plant nutrient for certain plants so uh, let us let us also discuss the framework nutrient elements now the framework nutrient elements are basically these three carbon oxygen uh, you know uh, and hydrogen now the carbon and oxygen basically plants are getting from the gaseous carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis however the hydrogen is obtained from the water also in the process of photosynthesis so these three elements plants are getting directly from air and water and these three elements are required in large quantities for the production of plant constituents such as cellulose or starch i have already told you and many times they are referred as the framework elements so oxygen carbon and hydrogen makes up remember 95% of plant biomass and the remaining 5% only made by all other elements so that's why they are framework elements and they are required in major quantity uh, of plant biomass and only rest 55 percent uh, is required by only 5 percent is made up by all the other uh, you know mineral nutrient so let us see what are the you know what are the different features of mineral nutrients so 14 mineral nutrients we have already shown you and they are called mineral nutrients because they are taken up by mineral form or inorganic form and they are traditionally divided into two groups like macronutrients and micronutrients i have already, already told you and according to the relative amount of amount required so this 14 mineral elements are taken by plants by specific chemical form regardless of their source now this is very important now for example nitrogen is an essential plant element or you know it is an important macronutrient or primary nutrient and uh, these nitrogen is present in soil in different forms organic forms inorganic forms however plant can only you know uptake nitrogen in two forms either nitrate or ammonium forms so these two forms are considered as available forms of nitrogen so it doesn't matter if the soil has high amount of total nitrogen that doesn't show the availability to the plant 
plant is the, the the growth and yield and nutrition of plant is dependent on the available fraction of the total element so similar is also true for other element just like in case of phosphorus you know you know phosphorus is uh, you know it's taken by the plant by either primary orthophosphate ion or secondary orthophosphate ion so <coughs> these two are the available forms of phosphate for uh, for for the plants so these 14 elements are taken up by the plants in specific chemical forms regardless of their source so we call them available forms we'll discuss the available forms later in this lecture what are the available forms for individual mineral now the difference in plant concentration between macronutrients and micronutrients is enormous obviously i told you the dif the, the basic prima ba basic idea behind uh, dividing these elements or the mineral nutrients into macro elements and micro elements is the relative amount required by the plant. So, the relative contents of nitrogen and molybdenum in plant is in the range of 10,000 to 1. So, plant is ab about 40 times more magnesium than Ap. So, I mean you can have an idea about the differences between the macronutrients and micronutrients, the so relative quantity of the macronutrients and micronutrients required by the plant. So, uh, 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 let us talk about the macronutrients. Macronutrients are basically you know there are 6 macronutrients starting from nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium and sulphur. So, nit again nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium and sulphur and NPK are often referred to as the primary nutrients because they are required they are they are the most common elements found in commercial fertilizers and they are required in a large amount and they produce widespread deficiency symptoms so most of the deficiency symptoms which you can see in the plant uh, due to mineral deficiency are coming from this either n p and k deficiency and also calcium magnesium sulfur are referred as the secondary nutrients as they are also found in fertilizer and soil amendments and they are moderately required by the plant and they produce deficiency symptoms in patches and they are applied through fertilizer containing primary nutrients like single superphosphate or SSP. Now, the single superphosphate apart from you know apart from uh, supplying the phosphorus it also supplies the sulphur. So, this is a secondary element. So, that is why it can support it can it can it can, uh, it can supply both primary and secondary nutrient to the plant. Now, micronutrients are you know there are 8 micronutrients then iron, manganese, zinc, boron, copper, chloride and molybdenum and nickel and micronutrients are required in relatively very very minute quantities. Uh, but they are regardless of their content is again I am saying they are essential even if they are required in very minute quantities their presence in their absence will co will will will, will uh, you know their absence will will, will cause uh, deleterious effect in the plant life cycle and plant cannot complete its life cycle without their presence. So, So, what are the typical concentration of macronutrient elements sufficient for plant growth? Let us see in this table, you can see here the nitrogen is required in uh, 15,000 ppm or 1.5 percent and relative number of atoms is almost uh, you know 10 lakhs and obviously uh, potassium is uh, 10,000 ppm and 1 percent and 400,000 and calcium for you know 5,000 ppm or 0 0.5 percent and 200,000 atoms and magnesium uh, 2000 ppm 0 0.2 percent and 100,000 ppm uh, 100,000 of atoms. In case of phosphate uh, you know 2000 ppm and obviously 0 0.2 percent and 30,000 uh, number of atoms. In case of sulphur it is 1000 ppm and only 0 0.1 percent and it contains 30,000 atoms which is a relative number of atoms. So, uh, so relative concentration of essential plant nutrients uh, you know some micro elements also can be toxic for plants at level 
uh, only somewhat higher than the normal. So, in the majority of the cases this happens when the pH is low to very low. So, when the pH is very low to very low some micronutrients are there which shows uh, toxicity. For example, you know manganese is one of the one of the important micronutrient which shows toxicity in acid soil. So, aluminum and manganese toxicity are the most frequent ones in direct relation to the acid soil. So, manganese is an essential you know is an essential micronutrient for the plant. Now, if you see the typical concentration of micronutrient elements sufficient for plant growth, you will see for chlorine it is only 100 ppm and it is for iron it is also 100 ppm, uh, boron is only 20 ppm, manganese 20 ppm and then uh, copper uh, zinc is 20 ppm, copper is 6 ppm and molybdenum and nickel is required in you know in the lowest quantity that is almost 0 0.1 ppm. So, you can see among the all the micronutrients also the relative uh, you know uh, relatively chlorine and iron is required in higher quantity that is 100 ppm uh, as compared to the other uh, 6 uh, micro elements or micronutrients. Now, how about classifying these uh, uh, you know these nutrients based on the biochemical behavior or physiological function. Now, Mengel and Kirby these two scientists in 1987 has divided uh, have divided the essential plant nutrients into four groups. So, let us study what are these four groups. So, the group 1 include C, H, O, N and S these five which are the major constituents of organic plant materials uh, like carbohydrate like proteins, fats etcetera. And group 2 minerals are phosphorus and boron which are involved in biochemical reactions such as esterification. Third one, third group basically contains potassium, calcium, magnesium, manganese and chlorine and these elements are present in the free ionic state or are ad adsorbed to indiffusible organic anions that means an absorption of calcium by the carboxylic group of pectins. And finally, group 5 elements that is iron, copper, zinc and molybdenum and these elements are predominantly present in as chelates in the plant. So, you know about the chelates is that these are basically compound of organic matter uh, you know organic these are basically compound of organic matter and metals. So, uh, so we have learned about these 4 groups and uh, their <coughs> physiological functions. So, let us move ahead and see what are the uh, you know essential forms of different micronutrients or macronutrients and uh, what are their specific physiological functions. So, as we have already told that in case of group 1 obviously, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulphur. In case of carbon, the forms in which carbon is taken up by the plant is basically carbon dioxide and sometimes bicarbonate ion. H is basically taken up as H2O, oxygen by oxygen itself and uh, nitrogen by ammonium, uh, nitrate and elemental nitrogen or gaseous nitrogen in case of fixation and uh, <coughs> sulphur is obviously in case of uh, sulphate and uh, sulphur dioxide. Now, sulphur dioxide basically happens when there is a gaseous absorption in the leaves and uh, phosphorus is basically uh, primary orthophosphate ion that is H 2 PO 4 minus and secondary orthophosphate ion that is H PO 4 2 minus and boron is uh, uptaken by uh, H 3 BO 3 or boric acid form or uh, and this boron is required for esterification with native plant alcohol and phosphate esters are involved in this energy transfer. So, if you see group 3 obviously, this uh, group 3 is uh, uh, contains this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, different nutrients. So, starting with the potassium and forms in which potassium taken up by the plant is K plus and magnesium is present in Mg 2 plus, calcium uh, C A 2 plus, manganese is manganese 2 plus, uh, chlorine uh, this, is a, this is an anion that is chloride, iron that is uh, Fe 2 plus and copper that is Cu 2 plus. 
So, these group 3 elements are having non specific function and basically they involves in establishing the different types of osmotic potential and calcium is a complex component of plant uh, structural parts. So, you know plant uh, cell structure is basically depends on the calcium content uh, and uh, this iron and copper are presently present predominantly in the chelated form in prosthetic groups enable electron trans, uh, transport by valency charge. So, each of them has their own biochemical and physiological functions. So, this chart is very very uh, important and this uh, you know not chart, but this slide shows the deficiency symptoms of the nutrient elements. So, let us see them one by one and uh, this is very important. So, the color we represented are in, you know indicative and also they may vary from plant to plant. So, let us see starting from the nitrogen. You can see nitrogen basically shows stunted growth and extremely pale color in the lower leaves and upright leaves with light green and yellowish and appear burnt in extreme deficiency. So, this is a nitrogen uh, deficiency symptom. So, basically again uh, in, case in the absence of nitrogen you will see the yellowing of the lower leaves. In case of uh, potassium obviously, um, small spots on the leaf tips and edges of pale uh, edges of pale leaves and spots turn rusty and uh, folds at uh, tips. So, these are the deficiency symptoms of potassium. In case of molybdenum and leaves light green or lemon yellow orange and spots on whole leaf except uh, the veins and sticky secretion fr uh, from under the leaf. In case of copper, it is pale pink between the veins and wilt and drop basically these are the symptoms. In case of iron leaves are pale no spots major veins are green in color and in case of calcium um, the plant are dark green tender leaves are pale and drying starts from the tips and eventually leaf buds die. And uh, in case of boron uh, discoloration of leaf buds and breaking and dropping of the buds is important. In case of sulphur leaves light green veins pale green and no spots. In case of manganese, leaves pale in color, veins are venules dark green and reticulated. Zinc obviously leaves pale, uh, narrow and yellow and, and short veins dark uh, short veins dark green and uh, dark spots on uh, leaves and edges. In case of magnesium, paleness from leaf edges, you can see paleness from leaf edges and uh, no spots edges and uh, have cuff shade fold and leaves die and drop in extreme deficiency condition and phosphorus is very very important. In case of phosphorus plant short and dark green and in extreme deficiency turn brown or black and bronze color under the leaves. So, these are the you know deficiency symptoms of these uh, individual elements. So, uh, guys so uh, in this uh, lecture you have learned about different types of uh, different uh, essential elements and why we call them essential elements, what are the essential uh, you know essentiality criteria of uh, these nutrient elements. And uh, then we talked about the essential uh, or the available forms of uh, different nutrients. Uh, remember that uh, the total amount of any particular element does not mean that the total amount is available to the plant and availability to the plant depends on the available forms. For example, in case of nitrogen it is nitrate and ammonium, in case of phosphorus it is primary orthophosphate ion and secondary orthophosphate ion and uh, in case of potassium it is K plus. So, again nitrogen, phosphate and phosphorus and potassium are the macro elements and they are present in most of the commercial fertilizers and these commercial fertilizers uh, you know supply these elements to the uh, supplement this element to the deficient soil for plant growth and, uh, and macronutrients are also very very important especially in India uh, you know certain micronutrients are deficient in certain zones and uh, these micronutrients also causes uh, also cause a lot of yield reduction. So, regardless of their quantity required we should be very very careful about the micronutrient status of the soil and uh, 
we have already also discovered you know also discuss the different uh, deficiency symptoms of the nutrient elements so plant shows different signs of their deficiency um, and by identifying the proper deficiency symptom you can identify what is the particular nutrient which is lacking in the soil so guys i hope that you have uh, enjoyed this lecture and you have learned something new and uh, from the next lecture onwards we'll be starting uh, you know uh, we'll be starting nitrogen and their different uh, transformation of the nitrogen thank you very much